Good morning and welcome to Twickenham Stadium today on the day I'm delighted to be announcing the England squad for the Rugby World Cup 2023. As I'm sure you'll all appreciate, selecting just 33 players from the breadth of great players we've had in our training camps has been quite a challenging task. We believe this 33 has the right blend of experience and young, exciting talent and also has the positional flexibility and playing combinations that we'll require throughout the tournament. The coaching team and I welcome your questions and we look forward to sharing our thoughts with you. Steve, one of the biggest names to miss out is Henry Slade. A lot of focus on that decision. How difficult was it for you? How did you come to the decision and how did he react? So, this has been a number of difficult decisions as you have to take the squad down to 33 players and we have a lot of talented um, talented players to select from so by the, that nature is that quality players miss out on the 33 um, Henry's been uh, excellent throughout the training camp he, he's clearly disappointed but the message to the players that have not been selected is that be ready, be ready to be to come into this squad. We know that there will be changes. The past World Cup show us that there's bumps and bruises, and there has to be some change within the players. I think the the average is nearly two players a squad over the last number of um, number of tournaments. So what I've asked every player who's not been selected from who's been in our training camps is be ready to go. And on Henry, what did you say to him? What, what could, more could he have done, or what were the reasons why he's not in? Yeah, well, clearly, in each of the conversations I have with each of those players, I have a personal conversation and I give them some, some share my thoughts on the decision making process. Now, there are good players competing for each of these positions, and as I said earlier, the, and I've said this many times, I've decided that we'll um, play, we'll have three players in key positions in the front row, scrum half, fly half, for the, for the obvious reasons. What that means is that in other areas of the team, there, there are, you need to have positional flexibility, you need to make some compromises. That's always the balance you have to do in this selection process. How did he take it? And does he still have a, a future with England? Um, I think that the Henry, along with all the players that were not selected within the squad that I spoke to, are disappointed. Clearly, um, they all want to represent their country. They want to represent England. And they've all worked incredibly hard to be part of this squad. I'd also say that each one of them, I know, is going to be ready to go should that call come and we require them out in France. And at number eight, Billy Von Apola is your only specialist number eight. I know that there are other players who can play in that position. He's not played since April. Is that a risk? Um, so Billy's been fantastic in the, the in this training camp. It's been an opportunity to work with him, watch him, and, and see just how hard he has worked to come back from his injury. He looks in looks in great shape. He looks as fit as I've ever seen him, and um, I think his his experience will add to the squad. You haven't picked him in a team to this day. What's changed? Is it the fitness or has there been a, a change in attitude? Can you put your finger on it? Well, I think there's, there's a number of things and, and one of them, as I've alluded to, has been the opportunity to work with the players over a period of time now and an opportunity to understand more about what the squad needs. I think then clearly looking at the squad in its entirety in the what do we need um, in terms of, as I've discussed, the level of experience we need in, in some key positions, um, the type of player we need, what does the squad need, where's the balance of the squad? All those factors come into the decision-making process. And how do you rate your chances at this World Cup? Well, I think that this group of players, if, if you look at it now, they've got, um, we average over 40 caps, we've got an average age of 26, we've got, I think there's 14 in this squad, there's 14 of the 23 from the Rugby World Cup final in 2019. So we've got a, a group of players that are experienced, a group of players that, that understand, some players have played, this will be their fourth World Cup for some of them, they understand World Cup rugby. And that, 
that's exciting because that's blended with some players that, that have helped with their first tournament and are bringing that incredible talent that they bring. So our job is to harness all their strengths, pull them on the pitch and um, set up in a way that will we'll ensure we can uh, put out top quality performances. And as for us, over the next three weeks, the next three games, we'll be building towards the tournament. And for you, what constitutes success? Um, for, for us, as we look at it, and, and I see this every day with the players. I see them in their team room playing table tennis against them, each other they're desperate to win in everything they do and what I want to see is a group of players that is um, really work clear on what they want to do and how we're going to play really fit and energised towards it and, and then able to bring all their strengths onto the pitch because if you do that you add their competitive spirit and competitive desire into it they're desperate to win every encounter they go into we'll take an approach as we build through these weeks then we get to the tournament we'll make sure that we, we focus only one game at a time through the tournament but winning the World Cup, that's that's the bar, that's the absolute success? This group of players that we work with are some of the most competitive people I've ever met. So they want to win everything. They want to win everything they go into. Now, what I want to do is, as I say, we will build through these weeks till we get to the start of the tournament. We play Argentina, September 9th, Argentina, our first game of the World Cup. That'll be our focus. We play Argentina, the next game will be our focus. That's that's what we will go through this tournament. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Kevin, from your point of view, what were the key attributes you were looking for as a defensive coach when helping pick this squad? I, th- I think there are a number of them. Um, we went through a very thorough process. Um, Steve and I had the Six Nations and, and the experience of working throughout that period and learning a bit more about the players. And then certainly this last eight weeks and through watching the Premiership um, and getting around and speaking to people and understanding players gives a real insight. Um, you know, I'm not keen to share with you our defensive philosophy, but what we'll say is you know, we are, like most defences, you're heavily reliant on your back row and your centres to provide much of the energy and hit and um, we feel we've got a really good balancer. Hi Kevin, if I could just follow up that on defence for England, can you talk us through which players you're working with as the defensive leaders and what options you'll have at the World Cup? Uh, We're working with all of them, Um, I know that sounds pretty broad but when you put a squad together like this they all have to bring some leadership qualities, you understand Owen is captain. Courtney and Ellis have done a wonderful job as um, a second in charge, if you like. But right across the board, we're looking for leaders right throughout. So I mentioned the batter on the centres uh, a moment ago. They're the positions we'll particularly be reliant on. But as you guys have probably seen, there's a, a number of other players within that squad who will provide that aggression and um, energy to defend like we can. Thank you. And, and Richard, Henry Arundel being in the squad, we've seen him as an impact player. How do you see his attack developing with how young he is? Are we going to see more of him on the field in this World Cup or do you see him as that impact? Um, well, that's Steve's decision now. Um, who gets selected and who, how many minutes they get. But on Henry, obviously incredibly talented boy. And um, every time he touches the ball, one of them players that... Uh, there's a gasp in the stadium so um, really keen to work with him to um, hopefully help him as much as he can but it's, it's our job to get the ball as much space as possible because what he's got um, you can't teach and uh, Tom if I could ask you about Theo Dan um, obviously he must have really impressed come last weekend tell us a little bit about him and what you want to see of him at this World Cup um, so Theo's phenomenal he's got a phenomenal amount of power and ability um, and it's just our job to actually hone that and get, um, get that far in for the scrum. Thank you. Let's wait for the mic. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Hi, Steve. Um, obviously, Alex Tom Brent hasn't made the cut. Can you just talk to why that is? He must have been pretty gutted, I suppose. That's only natural, isn't it? But he's been, uh, you know, regular for you up to this point. Yes, and um, without meaning to repeat myself, there are uh, there are. Uh, Always good players that are going to miss out on the squad. I think Alex has done really well. He's, he's trained, trained well, and I think he's a very, very good player. I think there's a lot of competition in that back row, and I think, as we alluded to, there's, there's also flexibility in that back row around positions. You've got Lewis Ludham's ability to play in all three, six, seven, and eight, Ben Earl's ability to play seven and eight. 
Tom Curry, seven, eight, and six. Last World Cup played six. Um, so you see, there's a there's a lot of flexibility there. Um, and for me, it's about making the the decisions in the right combinations. And that's ultimately that's what it's come, it's come down to. And um, Courtney Laws is uh, fit and available, and obviously one of your vice captains. What kind of impact are you hoping to, to have from him? Because we've all seen in the past what he's been able to do, especially when he's fit. Yeah, Courtney's a Courtney's a world class player. He's, um, I think this is again this is his fourth World Cup. Um, a multiple British Lion, a, a player who, in any team he brings, he instills confidence in those around him with the way he plays and the, the intensity he brings in his play on the pitch. Um, he's very relaxed and calm off the pitch and then steps onto the pitch and brings incredibly comp- incredible competitive intensity. And I'm um, so looking forward to seeing that um, in an England shirt again. Just on Henry Slade, I mean, I appreciate what he's saying about numbers and, and having to take the requirements of covering all bases with three tens and everything. But in terms of the attacking approach, did it sort of partly also come down to the fact that in terms of what you're looking to do, you've got Joe there who can obviously add extra sort of pace and dynamism and also play on the wing. It just didn't quite fit in terms of what Henry provides, at, especially if we're thinking about 13. Yeah, well, I think as, as, you, as you look at now, as you look at the squad, you see there's a number of players who can play 13, can play 12. Joe, as you alluded to, gives you that wing cover. Um, you've got Elliot Daly play, can play 13, or Lawrence play 13, Manu can play 13. Joe, they've got the, the ability of Owen to play 10, play 12. So we've got flexibility throughout the centres, which is which has been um, an important aspect. And, and I'll say again, there's good players. Uh, that you can't select I would love to be more than 33 that I could pick I can't it's 33 um, so by the nature of being 33 and being limited to that players players will miss out and uh, Kev Sasuke, um how much are you looking forward to this you know personally with the challenge for you because it's um, I know that you talked about the reasons why you wanted to you know take on this role and everything comes with it this is the pinnacle isn't it for, for, for I suppose any, any coach yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely delighted to be involved. I think um, during my short time working with England, um, there have been some tough experiences, but some great ones as well, and a lot of learning that's taken place. And it was, it was great to be in Test Week last week. Um, probably wasn't what we uh, desired in the end, but we look forward to now what, to what's to come. And certainly from when we get on that plane at the end of August and go to France. Um, I know from the experience around me and speaking to players what a great experience the World Cup is so I'm looking forward to ripping in and giving it my best shot Steve um, you mentioned the uh, uh, playing the next game in front of you you've got three games ahead now before you get to France what's your strategy going to be in terms of building momentum against giving the whole squad opportunities do you have a clear strategy for that? Yeah, we have a, a, a very clear framework of what we're working towards from a training load point of view, from a tactical point of view, to ensure that when we get to September the 9th, we are we are ready, because that's what we're building towards. Also, to be clear, is we want to win the test matches. That's and I think I've said that from from day one. We want to win the test matches. Um, so we have that. We're also going to understand um, the need for adaptability. We we also understand the need for for adaptability um, to that to that framework, uh, but yeah, we've got a very clear plan in mind. And for you, Kevin, in terms of getting the defence stressed and test, what sort of challenges are you looking forward to from the uh, teams that you'll be facing? Um, I actually feel we've tested our de- defence a fair bit over the last eight weeks because of the competition for places and the way the squad have, have worked and and how hard they've gone after training. Um, we have had a fair few challenges um, but yeah really looking forward to coaching against some fantastic attacks some different attacks tactically uh, we'll face some from different some different teams down the track but I think what's important for us certainly this week is to make sure we're ready to play on Saturday Alex Hi Steve now you've got your, your final squad what can England fans expect from, from this World Cup squad in terms of style of play yeah so well I think that the Selection now is an important step. I think, as and I was asked a number of times around um, around selecting and why would you announce the squad on this, uh, this on this day. I think 
uh, now our focus is on about very much it's on about us this team and getting better and improving less about the selection I know I was noted last week that there was a lot of conversations a lot of thoughts amongst the players preparing for a test match but also about selection so I'm really pleased that we've we've announced the squad on this date I think it's been a, an important step for us and now we, 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 we build and I think that we've got to continue we've got three uh, important test matches in front of us uh, Wales at Twickenham, Ireland in Dublin and then Fiji back here at Twickenham and each one of them is going to be a, a step forward in terms of how we how we play. We'll also we're still in a, a, a reasonably um, challenging training phase right now and what we'll do is we'll start decreasing the training load as we get close to the tournament so we'll see the team sharpen up and we'll see that evidence very much that and we'll become more evident in the way we attack. And just lastly for me, um, obviously with Wales again this weekend, can we expect something closer to what might be a, f- a first choice team this weekend at Twickenham? Well, I think there's going to be changes. And, and I said this after the game on Saturday that we'd had our finalists had been in camp about four and a half weeks. And I didn't feel that it was right to be using very many of those finalists. I think they've had one more week preparing and so I think that many of them will become avail- more available for selection now but I'll get on the training field this afternoon and I'll have a good watch of the players and see where everybody is I can ask a question of Richard um, what, what's the balance between building your attack and giving players license to do what they want versus sort of maybe sort of hiding part of what you're doing before the World Cup um, I said from the start I'd like players to go out and show the absolute best of themselves now they have to do that um, within what's best for the team now uh, they've done that consistently um, in training building a base oh, I'm pretty confident come uh, tournament time that we'll have the balance of what you've just suggested exactly right where players can go out and feel like they can put their absolute best attacking performance on the field um, but we do what's exactly right to make sure we're winning the game. Yeah. Um, we're from a Japanese TV. Um, this is questions for Steve. Um, obviously, you, you worked for a Japanese school squad before, but um, how are you looking at the, uh, the current Japanese team and um, who will be the key players from the Jap- Japanese team uh, that you need to look out for? Yeah. Um, I think the, the current Japanese team is... Um, a really dangerous team and that's been shown evidence in the last the last two World Cups that the team gets to the World Cup and, and has performed really well in the last two World Cups I also saw on their um, recent tour in, no, in November of last year their tour that how hard they pushed France how in, in Japan pushed New Zealand so close this is a really dangerous team and a really well coached team and I think there's many players I could discuss with you. Um, the one I always look to straight away is, is more than just a player is, is Michael Leach and what he brings from a leadership, from a figurehead point of view to that team. We know he's a great player. He's, he's also, as I know, firsthand a very important um, person for them off the pitch. Any more? Yeah, Charles. Just a question for Tom, if that's okay. Um, Scrum in the first half on Saturday seemed to go really well and then suffer a little bit in the second half. Um, Are you sort of convinced and happy that what you saw in the first half, there's enough there to to right those wrongs in the second and that it won't sort of affect the preparation going forward? Yeah, I think happy is a word I might not use. I think um, there's some really good bits in there um, that show we've worked on and there's some stuff um, we need to improve on. Um, there's definitely stuff we can work on to move it forward. Well, um, Steve, in- sorry, England fans over the last couple of years have been pretty depressed with the results and and what they've seen from the England team. Now you've got your squad. How confident are you that you can spring a few surprises? Not many people expect you to go that far in the World Cup. Do you think this is a team that is capable of more than England fans will think at the moment? Well, I think. Um, as I spend time with these players on the training field and spend time with them and discussing aspects of the game with them uh, the more uh, I sense the excitement from them about what, what they can possibly do in France I think this is an incredible tournament we're all looking forward to 
and I know firsthand from when um, a team the team gets itself into the tournament as it did in 2007 and then focuses on each game as it comes and just tries to get better each week and then I think if you do that and you do that diligently then I think the team has the potential to um, to achieve something that they'll be very proud of and then looking at the talent you've got and comparing it to the other nations in the world do you think there's enough there to win a World Cup? Um, I'm don't tend to waste my time talking about looking at what the other teams have got concentrate on what we have and um, what I'll say again is that the players I have the players I work with I I think they're, they're fantastic and I'm looking forward to continuing to work with them over the coming weeks to be ready for the start of the tournament Yes Nick yeah. Just to follow up Steve that's okay um, you, you obviously have you know We've talked a lot about the fact that you haven't had the time that other coaches in other nations have they've been able to kind of layer things on and and, uh, and and you guys haven't. Clearly that's always been the challenge. You've known that since day one, but you're confident you'll, by the time you get to the big games at the World Cup, you'll be able to have had, you know, put those layers in place, especially in terms of attack and be able to attack with the same kind of, I suppose, sophistication that some of the, you know, the, you know, the, the informed sides are doing that we've seen in the last sort of few years where you haven't had that luxury so I've been really pleased to have the coaching team together for the last eight weeks and I promise you we've used every minute the eight weeks that we can and as the players have entered camp we've again gone through the fundamentals of what we need to do and then also speak to the players about being the fastest learning team and that's what we need to do and so I think we've used this eight weeks so far and then the, the the aspects we can take from Saturday's game and we'll take forward to this Saturday and I'm looking forward to being back here at Twickenham um, uh, on Saturday playing against Wales and then we'll take it forward to the following week to make sure that when we get to Argentina uh, to play against Argentina on September 9th that we're ready. James. Steve, one last one from me. Um, I know you're a big friend of Gareth Southgate. Um, we, we've seen a lot of a great summer of sports so far, both in cricket, in netball, the Lionesses a few minutes ago. Have you any plans to bring any of that drumbeat to the other sports within to the squad before you go, just in terms of an emotional uplift or actually cross transfer of ideas? In terms of bringing uh, a drum, in terms of the emotion and the learning from those uh, other sports? Well, I think that. Um, as, as just discussed, we want to make sure we're learning fast. We spend an awful lot of time looking at different experiences, um, different rugby teams, different games that are ongoing, and also outside of just rugby. But what we can take is as um, learning points for us to help us as a team move forward. Any plans to bring anybody in for a few uh, motivational stuff? Uh, at this stage, they're, 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 they're all, I always have plans in, in place, and it's not something I'll be talking about publicly right now. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.